Topic three, segment disclosures. Alrighty, so picture this. We now have one parent entity that has now consolidated several subsidiary companies. What exactly does the consolidated income statement and balance sheet mean? Sure, uh, it means a lot and represents the total economic power the company controls, but it's also a lot of squished information that doesn't really tell the story as to how many service lines a company has or where they have their geographic operations. So yes, we smushed together several separate legal entities to represent the power of their consolidated efforts due to the control that the parents have over the subsidiaries. But now we need to splice the data in such a way that we provide stakeholders meaningful information. IFRS 8 requires that financial statements of companies with public equity or debt disclose information on segments to provide investors with high quality information. An operating segment both earns revenues and incurs expenses from operations and has its results regularly reviewed by key executives. Let's look at some hard standards. If one or more, so if at least one of these criteria uh, is met, the segment should be disclosed. The first is looking at revenues. If we look at total revenues for a company and a segment represents 10% or more of these combined revenues, then we should disclose it separately. Same thing with assets. If uh, any one set operating line has assets, 10% or more of the combined assets, we need to report that segment separately. Okay, now profit and loss. Um, this is a little bit trickier, but the 10% rule still, still applies. We just need to look at it a little bit differently. So we have each one of our operating segments and we look at each operating segment's profit or loss. And then we split up all the operating segments that are profitable. And we split up all this uh, operating segments which are not profitable, that are in a loss position. And we take the absolute value of both of those separate pools. And then we get the total absolute profit and the total absolute loss. So essentially turn all the negatives into a positive. And whichever one, whichever bucket is bigger, the total positives or the total negatives, that becomes our basis and we apply 10% of that and then we go through and we look at all the individual operating segments, profit and losses, and if that absolute number is bigger than 10% of the absolute profit or loss 10%, then we report it. Oof. Alrighty, uh, it's tricky, so feel free to send me an email if you want to go over that um, after giving it a go, perhaps in the tutorials. Okay, oh, actually, well, actually, like email me anytime, but just know that um, it may be a little bit uh, stickier with the tutorials. Okay, when to report a segment. Segments that don't meet the criteria can then can be combined and called other. Note that after you have identified uh, using those three tests above, the revenues, assets, and profit loss test, um, you need to make sure there's kind of a, a, thir a fourth overarching one. So once you find out all of your reportable segments from those three criteria, then you have to look and see, okay, of my reportable segments, do I have 75% or more of external revenues must be reported in one of those segments. If not, then I have to go through and include the next biggest segment. IFRS suggests that 10 is the maximum number of segments. Uh, however, you know, this will, we won't encounter an issue kind of that big. Um, you may be wondering if perhaps then they are kind of going back and maybe you are kind of segmenting your company too much if you are if you are exceeding that 10%. Uh, remember, the whole point of this is to provide meaningful information to the stakeholders. Okay, there are many disclosures required for the segments. 
uh, you know, including how were the segments determined, reconciliation to the income statement, uh, what is the split between internal revenues, meaning with our subsidiaries, and what is it with our external revenues, uh, more details about income calculations. There are many more not listed here. If you're curious, feel free to have a peek with IFRS 8. What am I what am I wanting you to get away from disclosures aspect of this? Well, first of all, um, I want you to understand how how to report a segment, uh, those three criteria, and then that one overarching 75%. And then I want you to understand that um, the purpose of this is to provide information and value to stakeholders and that disclosures, including a reconciliation of all of these individual segments must roll up to that consolidated income statement. So everything must tick and tie out. I don't need you and I don't want you to uh, memorize every single note disclosure that is uh, applicable here. Uh, in real life, you can go find those out. Um, but where your application of knowledge comes into play is being able to identify um, A, that record, reporting segments are required, and B, how to differentiate what is reportable versus what we can throw in that other bucket. Time for a question. Given the following segment information, which of the following segments should be disclosed? Note, we only have two columns here, the revenues and the profit. Uh, I mentioned that should say profit or loss. So we're going to ignore the asset test for now. Is it A, both A and B are reportable? Is it B, all? Is it C, A and C are reportable? Or is it D, B and C are reportable? Well, if you said B, all are reportable, you would be correct. Let's take a peek on how we got there. All right, so I just added this total column here. I'm gonna add these up. So 800 plus 400 plus 100 equals 1300. And if I just use my 10% test here, I'm saying that anything above, pardon me, anything 130 or above would be reportable. So right here, this is above 130, this is above 130, so you are reportable, and you are reportable. Okay, and now here, my profit test, that is the 10% of the absolute, of um, absolute profits or absolute loss. So that would be 10% of either 220 or 100. Now, where did I get this from? Well, profit, total profit for all the segments, is 220, 200 plus 20, and total absolute um, loss would be 100 turned positive. Which one's bigger? That's the 220, so I will ignore that one here. Times it by 10%, and that gives me 22, and in which case this absolute number is bigger than 22, so R C is also, a, um, a reportable segment, which is why both A, B, and C, or B, all of the above, is the correct answer here. Okay, so that's it for this chapter. We're going to be going on and getting some high-level uh, familiarity with foreign currency and how to offset the risk of some foreign currency transactions in the next chapter. Uh, I would really kindly suggest um, after this video, uh, adding on to your mind map if you have one going, uh, kind of your flow chart of decision making to see where these three other consolidation reporting issues come into play. How we look at um, SPEs, joint arrangements, as well as when we have our consolidated financial statements, uh, how do we pick out meaningful operating segments and what is required of us under IFRS. All right. Thank you so, so much. I will see you in the next one.